Okay, hello and welcome to my jewel thief circuit, which I intentionally spelled wrong so, so I could stand out on the internet. Okay, here it is. This is a circuit, well known circuit. It uses a coil which has the the current flowing into the coil going in opposite directions, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, just to see what it does, dual feed circuit. So we can use a 1.5 volt battery here, and we can use that to light an array of LEDs. Now, each of these LEDs has a switch on voltage of 3 volts, so if you were to put an LED across this battery, it wouldn't light. But when you use it in this circuit, you will see that. Sorry about it, because I haven't actually got a battery holder, so I've got to kind of hold this on. So uh, we'll get there in the end. There I am. Come on, you've got to do it. Right, so there we are. There's it all lit. And if you look on the scope, we can see it rapidly switching on and off. If you look on the scope, oh, never work without a battery holder, Paul. If you look on the, yeah, if you look on the scope, you can see the, the circuit switching rapidly on and off. And if you listen very closely, you can hear a tone. And that tone is the core of the this sort of transformer -y thing here. It's a core vibrating in sympathy with the rise and fall of the magnetic field. Okay. So in this LED here, LED array, we've got 60 LEDs. I actually got bored of doing it, but I would imagine you could go even further. You'd need an insanely I, was it a low board and threshold? I can't remember which one. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. Who cares? Um, so here we have the circuit. We've got a 1.5 volt battery here. We've got a 220 ohm variable resistor. Now, I want to make this quick, so I'm not going to demonstrate this, but if you change the value of this resistor, the tone, this tone will change, and the frequency of the, the frequency of the collapsing and rising magnetic field will also change. What happens is current flows through the coil to the base and current also flows through the collector. The collector current is much larger than the base current and we've got a cross-sectional area here of both of these coils what happens is because the currents are flowing in opposite directions the magnetic field of the induced voltage aids the base voltage here and causes a transistor to switch on very rapidly so we get a surging current as the transistor switches on however the voltage this voltage induced voltage depends upon the changing current as soon as the transistor reaches saturation switches on fully that changing current is no longer there and the transistor switches off very very rapidly the reverse happens the currents reverse and the transistor switches off very rapidly and we get a very large potentially very large voltage spike at this point here just right here and that voltage spike can be used to switch on in this case I've used three LEDs in series in my array and my array contains 20 of those, 20 series of three LEDs all going this way. The voltage spike can be used to switch them on and because it's switching on and off so rapidly we can't detect it actually being switched on and off. Um, just a, a little bit of technical information here, we've got the, in, the uh, induced voltage, this voltage spike here is equal to the inductance of the coil, that's the coil of the, here, this coil, that's the L part minus L, times the change in current divided by the change in resistance. So because this transistor switches off so rapidly, the change in current and the change in time, the change in time is usually very small, the change in current is usually relatively large, so we can get a nice big voltage spike there. And that's basically how it works. That's how you're able to light so many LEDs from a 1.5 volt battery. I'll just do this one bit, one bit again. With the 